This is DMG, yada yada yada, cheers. Okay, so we're going to be creating some chairs for that table we did in video 21. And we're going to use the same things, the lollipop sticks and the matchsticks. So just grab two lollipop sticks and grab the hot glue gun and stick the two together. This is going to form the seat of the chair. Now, I made a mistake here. I did not allow the glue to get hot enough. So the bond is not very good. And you'll see that later. So here I'm measuring how wide the lollipop sticks are under the watchful eye of 007. And I'm now measuring the same distance along. So two centimeters along after a quick cuddle. And uh, we should get four of them to this, uh, this lollipop stick because it's about 10 centimeters long. So I'm just crossing across the two centimeter marks. It will give us the cutting guides. And uh, there, I'm going to be making four chairs out of this. Um, I'll just show you the one, but they will be made in exactly the same way. So I'm going to lock off the curls now, so we don't need those. And uh, I'm now going to lop off the other side as well. And I was starting to notice the problem with the glue here. And that's why there was a bit of a pause as I inspected it. So I was going very carefully. And um, now I'm going to cut along the line. So that was just cutting the curls off and cut along the lines. But as you can see, the wood just split apart there. And uh, that's what happens when you don't let the glue get hot enough and don't let it bond. So um, some of them were right, but uh, two of them didn't work properly. So they needed to be re-glued, which I'm doing here. Uh, so that's just a caution in making sure that the glue is hot enough to uh, maintain the bond when you apply pressure with the scissors. So now I'm going to just have a look at how high the matchsticks are going to go and I'm going to measure one centimeter for the, um, the, the legs or that we're going to um, have both sides of the matchsticks going to measure one centimeter. So the matchsticks I lop off the, the one centimeter parts. This is just two matchsticks. So one, the small one centimeter off cut is going to be the front legs and then the rest where you can see the mark is still there, they're going to be the backing legs. So the backing legs, I apply glue on the side of the uh, lollipop sticks and then apply the leg with the pencil mark on the bottom side uh, for both the backing legs. And then that will allow us to apply a backrest later. And then I apply um, hot glue underneath for the front legs. So um, there is decreased surface area on the back legs. So you can uh, create a two centimeter brace across if you wish to increase the surface area. That will make uh, the glue bond a little bit better on the back legs. But uh, it seemed to be working fine for me. Um, it just depends on whether your, your lollipop sticks are going to be able to support um, how thick they are and that sort of thing. So then I grab an, another lollipop stick or an off cut and I measure how far apart the back legs are and cut that out and then apply hot glue on the insides of the back, back leg bits and then apply the back rest. So essentially that's going to be about two centimeters up off the back of the chair. You can see there's um, some matchsticks left over and I'm just going to lop those off with a pair of scissors. So essentially it's the same height as the square area of the chair so seat. So two centimeters by two centimeters the square seat and then two centimeter high backrest with one centimeter legs underneath. This one was a little bit unstable so I'm just lopping off a little piece underneath the leg that's making it unstable. And then I undercoat it as in video three. And then as in the last video with the table, I then apply brown and then yellow dry, dry brush. So here we have them on a tile with a bunch of the other things we've created in this series. So you've got the standard pillars, the ruined pillars, the table, the bookcase, the open treasure chest, a pile of treasure, the door, and of course a standard tile. 
and you can see that a you know this is a great representation of a battlefield you uh, will have quite a lot of entertaining battles because there's so many things that can happen in this area so those chairs are really simple to do and i made four of them because i basically will reuse as the players go through the dungeon i will reuse the same pieces of furniture and just move them from one room to the next and uh, so i don't create lots and lots of furniture just for each room that i'm uh, that i'm going into just one set now the beauty of using furniture like this is say for instance with the tables and chairs you can use the table as high ground if you're a player you can just get up onto the table and then you'll get high ground bonuses against monsters and other foes uh, you can also break it up or if it is broken you can use it as clubs um, there are obviously hit point values and that sort of thing depending on which rule version you're using uh, you'll need to have a look at that in the dmg uh, hey <laughs> Uh, you can also prevent charges by flipping over the tables or putting them in the way. Uh, great for using for cover. Uh, you can also block doors to prevent things from coming into the room. Uh, you can uh, break them up and use them as firewood. Uh, interesting game I just played where uh, the mage was using a fireball spell and all the furniture in the room caught a light. So now you have to contend with blazing infernos inside the room as well as fighting monsters. So it makes the game far more tactical and the battles far more interesting when you have these sort of elements in there. And it's not just a static flat, um, you know, room with no, with no real furniture that, you know, place needs to feel lived in. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, the feel of the game improves significantly when you're using things like this. Um, the, the, the players can immediately visualize the tactical uh, portions of the game, so the battles become far more interesting rather than just rolling dice. It's now, okay, where am I going to be positioned? How am I going to attack this? Can I get around behind and, and get my flanking bonus? And that sort of thing, you know, the, all that comes into play rather than just being a static move here move here attack roll 25 dice and the thing dies uh, this is 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 far more entertaining and your games will improve in immersion significantly so if you like this video like button if you want to see future videos subscribe to the channel and you can also check out the facebook page and the website the dmg.info until the next video See you then. This will probably be the last video that you see 007 in. He may reappear again in the future, but uh, unfortunately I can't sustain his agent's tuna fees, uh, and so he is moving on to other things. Apparently he may be the new Puss in Boots.